Hi, uh, back to be a knowledge center. In this session, we'll see like how to uh, load as a post request of web API. So there seems to be a, um, a post request in API where we need to pass the parameter values in header section and wanted to be uh, uh, validate and uh, run a load on that web API post request and see how it is uh, working. So let me quickly quickly get into this recorder and see that how I'm going to do that. So as I uh, explained earlier, we have a weather forecast API which is having get and post request. So now I wanted to uh, test that using uh, uh, you know uh, post request. So if you look at here, this is straight away get request. If you are uh, giving that HTTP dot post of you know, uh, HTTP colon local host I two seven eight seven slash weather forecast, right? And for this, if I pass through some values here, right? Uh, in my case, ID uh, equal to some three three eight seven something. Then we've seen some problem here, right? So when I run this K6 app test, so it gives me a problem here because it is running and constant, uh, you know, uh, virtual user count. So this has to be changed. And now you'll see like how to do that. So I'm going to just changing this to a, uh, uh, otherwise a new function, a new uh, script API, uh, you know, uh, post, uh, request dot js so here i'm going to write so http from k6 http right and import uh, with uh, um, k6 right and here export um let options this is something we need to define it it all depends on and again, the default function, I'm going to define it. Here, I'm going to write post function here. HTTP colon localhost 5287, right? Uh, weather forecast. So to this, we have to pass two parameters. One is the payload and other thing was the content uh, type, which you are passing, right? So here you have to define some values here, like, you know, the first thing is you have to define the payload here. So for me, the payload is uh, ID, right? Which actually I'm uh, passing it here. And uh, sometimes all you just pass username, right? So I'm just defining this username. And this username I'm passing uh, BRR and user ID and just passing this as 3387. So now this is something payload I'm passing to my post request and the parameters headers should be defined content type application this right. So and this you have to say the payload and then uh, params. That's it. So you have to define these two or you directly define it here itself payload equal to so JSON string file of this thing, you can directly specify this. And also parameters you have to define it in the headers, what kind of text or input you're passing to the uh, post request. So now I run this, API post request.js, then it will start sending my post request to a server, right? I think you can see here like duration and HTTP request duration, and as you can see, the payload request is zero. So that means this is really send these to, uh, you know, server. Again, sleep of one. And here, I think I was mentioning this is some 10 users. So let us say like 10 duration, I'm giving it as so 10 seconds. Let's see like how it is running. When I run this, so for 10 users, the post request is sending to the server with these parameters. Anyway, in my API, I'm not using this uh, input uh, string which you are passing through JSON value. And hence it is always passing and 
retrieve the default value, which is inside of this post request, right? So when I look at here, the post request just inside actually, 100% no issues with that. So now you can see that 100 iterations has been sent because turned into 10 users, right? So I think virtual users 10 and virtual max is a 10. Okay. When I say this is one second, so you will get uh, only a one a 10 request because each user time is 10, right? So iterations are 10, users are 10. Got it? This is something you will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, adjusting the post request, right? So I hope you understand like how to uh, execute uh, the post request with case flow testing. Okay. So, so that you will get the results as like here in the same way. Okay. So let me tell you another uh, aspect here. Like, so if you wanted to test it, um, kind of, you know, threshold values, because I wanted to uh, test that my HTTP request fail rate less than so 0 0.01 or 1 so say something if request duration is you know less than 200 so just uh, throw me some uh, exception something like that so you can define that uh, things in let options here like as you mentioned here the setting here itself you can specify like you know here itself threshold right here you can just say HTTP request fail right here, and you can say that rate of zero zero point one something, right? And also HTTP uh, request duration. So max pages right. I think the ninety five pages. I'm going to take it is beyond or below 10 seconds or something. So I wanted to, you know, uh, throw a uh, message. Okay. So after defining this, you know, all these things, the threshold values, when I try to run this, so you will definitely see the threshold violations here. When I run this, so what is happening is, if you look at here, the the okay. Uh, looking at here, um, a duration almost uh, you know three point seventeen seconds, which is less than ten, and request fail almost zero, right? So. When I say this is something true, let me try this. When I run this, so you'll see and uh, notice that things are wrong. You can see duration was crossed here. That means whatever thresholds you are mentioned for the HTTP request duration was less than two seconds. But here, in this case, it was taken almost for 3.57 milliseconds, which is not less than, right? Hence, it is uh, violated. Here, you can see that the shoals on matrix duration have been breached, right? So similarly, HTTP block, request block, if you wanted to uh, you know, test that threshold value, you can specify that in similar way, uh, iterations, uh, iteration duration, and HTTP request, and sending in data. So all these things can be mentioned and specified in, instead of thresholds. And that will take care of the runtime and see uh, the dashboard metrics and give you the stats as like here in this way. Okay, so this is something uh, you will be you know uh, adding the threshold values to your request and check that whether it is um, properly you know executing and giving response back as expected. Otherwise, so what it is happening is if you don't have a benchmark for your scripts, your testing scripts. So definitely what will happen is it is going beyond that and it is report, reporting different stats, which is not a price. Okay, you should have something uh, to be uh, you know, frank, like you know, whether it is 
um, reaching that uh, specified threshold or not. If it is beyond the threshold value, then it is going to report a breach uh, comment in the report. Okay. And, and similar way, I think uh, if you wanted to pass that request status is to successfully execute the server or not. So there is the other kind of uh, explanation for that. So that is like, you know, here, uh, instead of keeping uh, individual independently, can I say that constant result equals something, right? It will hold this response in the variable res response, right? So after getting this, if I check that, like uh, response dot status equal to equal to right 200 okay so uh, if it is 200 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say something like you know let's say comment console dot Succeed. Right. So if it is if it is else uh, console dot log okay. So now when when I run this and you notice that so what was the status of your scripts running out here like you know mm, we look at here almost all are succeeded two three four five six seven eight nine so out of you know ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten right so ten requests are successfully you know uh executed here because i'm just looking at the status of my response which is coming from the server and then identifying that whether it is uh, having 200 or not. In the similar way, I think if you want to test something in the data, so you can test it that also, or you can print that response here once it is coming back. So first I'll uh, print my response, what is uh, coming, right? And see like what kind of conditions and condition statements you can put upon this set. So after executing on my scripts, you can see here, this is something written back to uh, response. So, so if you look at here, this is the complete response coming back from my API request. This is the port number and this is the URL and this is status and status text. And this is the header I'm passing it. And this is the data coming from the uh, API in the body itself, right? And after that, whether it is succeeded or not. Okay, so something, uh, useful to uh, unit test of api as well it's not only using it for load testing also you can use it for unit testing of apis with this k6 load testing right so i hope you understood like how to use this k6 for unit testing of api as well as load testing and stress testing and scenario based testing etc thanks for listening to this video and please subscribe this channel for more videos thank you